today we're going to take a step back, literally. We're going to work on repulse the monkey, which in the 24 form you are stepping backwards. And we're going to examine repulse the monkey in, uh, in terms of those underlying principles, because it's not only going to help you improve the movement itself, but it's going to help you relax and be able to get the benefits of Tai Chi instead of just worrying about not falling when you are stepping backwards. So let's look at the very first underlying principle is rotation. And the way that I want to look at that first is the way we do repulse the monkey in the simplified eight form. It's the first move after preparation in that simplified eight form. And you don't actually step. You have to use the rotation to get that movement going. So if you think about starting with preparation with that simplified eight form, and then you're rotating to bring your left hand forward and your right hand kind of behind you, kind of to the side. But notice that my torso is now rotating on a 45 degree angle, even though my feet are not moving. So if we do that preparation, and then rotating here to start the movement, and then as I bring that right hand up and over, and I rotate again, that pulls that left hand back and allows that right hand to come forward more. So if you just do your repulse the monkey as if you're doing the simplified eight form and just focus on this rotation, even though your feet are not moving, that's going to help you start to understand how Repulse the Monkey is really supposed to feel. Let's do just the feet stepping backwards. Bring your left foot forward. Again, think about having your body on a 45 degree angle. If you think about front of the room is straight on, you wanna be at a 45 degree angle. When you step back, don't step right behind your left, your um, right foot here. Your left foot is the one that's moving. Step a little bit behind and a little bit to the left. And then pivot on your, the balls of your feet or the, I pivot on the, um, the ball of my foot. And you just pivot as you step backwards. Obviously the shoes make a big difference in the pivoting. If you're using tennis shoes or something that's grippy, be very careful with that pivot because I don't want you to torque your knee. If you can have some shoes that have a nice slide to them. When we're stepping back and thinking about pivoting from corner to corner, Remember that's part of the rotation. Now you're stepping back and pivoting. You're rotating from the Dantian. Think about this movement here as you step back and pivot. It's that Dantian that if there were a flashlight, it's now pointing here. Then as I step back, it points to the other corner. When you're stepping back, it's almost like a herringbone kind of pattern. Again, you're not stepping back and turning all the way, stepping straight back and turning all the way. You're in a herringbone kind of pattern, even though you're going straight back, your feet are coming at a diagonal and coming back, leaving a channel between your feet so that you're not uh, making yourself unbalanced as you step backwards. So you have to think about how rotation is helping, 
how moving from the Dantian is helping. Let's think about, let's put the arms and the feet together now and think about how columns are helping, how your substantial and insubstantial is very important. And then we'll move on to a couple other of the principles. If you bring your left foot forward, left hand is in front, right hand is kind of behind, but not you're not 100% open. You're going to bring that right hand up and over and stepping back, pivoting and opening up. When I say you think you're thinking about your columns, I don't want you, I, I want you to think about rotating on that central column, keeping your shoulders in harmony with your hips as you step back and turn. Now the really important principle that will help you keep those columns intact, will help you step backwards, is understanding your substantial and insubstantial changes in that movement. You cannot step backwards with this left foot unless it's empty. There's no way, if you have any weight on that leg, you can't step backwards with it. So you have to think about bringing your weight back onto the right. I'm gonna turn just a little bit here. If I bring my weight back to the right and let my left foot be empty, then I can turn and keep myself in good columns. If I bring my weight back this way, and my leading with my shoulders, obviously my columns are broken and I'm going to fall backwards. So your columns and your insubstantial and substantial need to work together. As you bring your weight back, you're moving from the Dantian, you're simply moving a little bit to allow this left leg to become empty, the front leg to become empty. That's going to help you as you step back and then bringing that right hand up and over, turn and open yourself up. Bring the weight back to the left now, still thinking about keeping those columns intact. You're not leading with your shoulders, you're leading with your Dan Tien. Bringing that left hand up and over, step back on that herringbone pattern and pivot using your rotation. Let's do one more. Bring your weight back to the right. Bring this right hand up and over. Step back and turn. Practicing that substantial and insubstantial weight change is very important to making you stable as you step backwards. One of the best ways to practice that is to test that front leg to make sure that it's actually empty. So the way that you do that is with your left foot forward, bringing your weight back to the right. Now separate the leg, kick before you step back and turn. Bring your weight back to the left now. Make sure that right leg is empty. If it is, you should be able to lift and kick and then complete the turn. Bringing the weight back to the right, lift and kick that left, stepping back and turn. That's a great way to practice to make sure that you really are allowing that front leg to be completely empty, allowing your columns, you're not leaning back, because if you step back, if you bring your weight back, but you bring it back with your shoulders and then try to kick, there's no way you're gonna be balanced as you turn. So that's a good test of am I 
keeping my columns intact? Do I understand my substantial and insubstantial? Am I moving, leading from the Dantian? It's also a great test of am I rooted and grounded? Am I really feeling the ground? Have I lowered my center of gravity? I have my substantial and insubstantial. I can kick. I know as I turn, I'm leading from the Dantian. I'm turning, rotating on my central column. That practice of kicking before you step back will help you, will help reinforce using all of those other underlying principles. So let's do that one more time. As you have your left foot forward, bring your weight back to the right. Think about this leg being completely empty, the left leg. Think about being rooted and grounded through the right side, lift and kick, and then complete the turn. Don't try to do too much at once. Bring your weight back. Think about this being completely empty, being rooted and grounded. Your columns are nice and straight. Kick, stepping back on that herringbone pattern, and then complete the rotation. Sometimes it, of course, we want to make it fluid. We want to make it graceful and keep that motion going. That's where we're headed as we practice. But sometimes it's worthwhile to stop, think about each of the pieces, practice it in kind of a disjointed way with that kick, and then complete the motion, that's okay, because that's going to help you with that continuous movement and help it become more graceful because you are more balanced as you're stepping backwards. Now I also want you to consider what you're doing with your hands. Because what happens a lot with repulse the monkey, as people start to think about their insubstantial and substantial, they start doing this with their hands and you're not really completing the movement. If all you're doing is rotating like this, you're not thinking about your opponent because that's not what's happening. This as you address your opponent, you think about this is the hand that's being held. This is the hand that's open. You're actually using your rotation to get away from that opponent. You're stepping back away using that power of the rotation, but you also have to be able to push and break that grip of your opponent. You also, as you step back with this hand, you may actually have the opportunity as you break that grip to grab their arm and do something different in, in an um, aggressive way towards them. But you don't have that opportunity if you're simply moving back like this. So as an underlying principle, the martial arts application, having that sense of an opponent is important in Repulse the Monkey. The other part of that sense of an opponent, the other principle is that idea of where is my energy? What am I doing with my energy? And if you think about Repulse the Monkey, there's a big ball here. You have to, I wish I could draw it for you, but there's a big ball of energy. And what you're doing is you're compressing that energy right at the point where you need it. It's ready to explode into your opponent. If you're just moving your arms like this, there's no 
focused energy going into your opponent. You have to use your hands in a way that you understand the movement. So let's turn back to the mirror here. Left foot forward, left hand in front. Remember that right hand is the one that's free. Your left hand is being held by your opponent. You want to take that energy and make that ball right here. Compress that energy. What happens when you compress all that energy into a smaller space? It wants to explode, which is perfect. That's what you want it to do. You're compressing that energy. And then as you step back, you're pushing your opponent away from you. You're pushing that energy into them. You want that push with this hand as you separate out then and come back into an open position. If all you're doing here is just bringing that hand forward, you're not actually pushing an opponent away. So focus on, let's just do that right hand, bringing that right hand up and over, form that ball. Now at this point, bring your weight back to your right, step back on your herringbone pattern and push as you rotate. That's the moment of power. That's when you need that rotation to get yourself away from your opponent. Let's do it again on that same side, bringing that right hand up and over. Now bring your weight back, step back, and actually push that opponent away. And the rotation is what's pulling that left hand back. You can see how all of the underlying principles are starting to help each other. And that's the way it should be with each movement that you're doing. And that's why we're doing this deeper dive into individual movements. I want you to understand the really important features of each movement and not just get into a habit of just flowing through the movement because it feels good, which is, we want Tai Chi to feel good, but you also have to apply those principles so that you're understanding really why you're doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm.